Well, we're so happy that you guys have decided to tune back in once again this week as we move into our fourth and what will be our final installment of our series, Life Lessons. It's crazy to think that this would have actually been the last week of our physical gathering for the semester. Uh, and that being said, this will be our last video for a while. Uh, but I do want to encourage you guys to keep your eyes on the podcast throughout this summer uh, because we're going to be trying to upload a few things to it uh, throughout the summer to keep you guys engaged with us while you're gone. But I'm excited to get into this episode tonight because I once again think it's going to be something that's very practical uh, as we're discussing the subject of it's kind of a big deal, but it's kind of not. And everyone that I have talked to concerning their college years kind of has the same response concerning this subject in the sense that while they were in college, there were some things that at the time seemed like a big deal to them, but after they graduated and moved on and reflected back on those things, they realized, okay, maybe they weren't such a big deal after all. And that's what we're going to look at together in this episode. There were some things that we considered to be a really big deal during our college years. They were our main sources of stress, worry, anxiety, unrest, the things that kept us up at night, so to speak. And then we graduated and we realized looking back on those things that maybe they weren't worth getting so worked up over them like we did. So babe, I'm gonna let you start us off. Tell us, what were the things that kept you up at night? What were the things that caused you worry, stress, anxiety what were the things that for you were such a big deal during your college years during high school um i had like a good gpa i you know graduated in the top 10 so i wanted to do well in college too so doing well in college to me was making good grades um i wanted to go to college and declare my major freshman year so i didn't waste a lot of time and main thing to me was i wanted to graduate in four years i thought that was so important like i have to graduate in four years i don't want to be in college any longer than i have to to the point that i gave up summers to take summer classes because that was the only way i was going to graduate in four years because unlike you you guys get to do a lot of dual enrollment and you get to go to college with credit hours already. We didn't have that. It started the year after I got done at Central. So I went into college with no credit hours starting out. And the only way I was going to finish all of those hours in, you know, four years, eight semesters was I had to take some classes in the summer. So those were my three things. So looking back now, why do you think those things weren't as big of a deal as you made them out to be during that time? So I do think that all those things are important and you definitely should put in time, energy, effort, but I didn't experiment at all. Like I went into college saying I was going to be a nurse and I never even took the time to see if there was something else I wanted to do. Like I didn't try a class that was out of, you know, the ordinary or something interesting to see if it could totally change my career path. And I, I say all the time, I'm really surprised I didn't um, consider like public relations because I, I love like communication classes and things like that and so um, ultimately I have the rest of my life to do a job so I didn't really have to finish it in four years and um, grades are important but when you get out of college most of your people that are looking at your resume they don't have a clue what your grades were and they don't really care they just know that you have the degree so I put a lot of time into that and it it is important, and I shouldn't have just, you know, I wouldn't go back and just waste the whole first two years of college taking a bunch of random classes and wasting my money and my parents' money or, you know, being careless, but I could have been not so uptight over it all and possibly found something else of interest. Yeah, I didn't take a whole lot of out-of-the-box, senseless classes either, other than badminton. <laughs> which he I thinks absolutely he was so good at. loved oh. and was quite good at. Mm -hmm. Finished number mm -hmm. one in singles in my class. So that's really one of my greater accomplishments, I feel like, <laughs> in college. I did not, however, ever come close to beating Coach Mack. And I know some of you that are going to be watching or listening to this have taken badminton mm -hmm. at UNA. You've tried without success to beat Coach Mack. I mean, the man is incredible mm -hmm. at badminton. But for me, you know, looking looking at my college years, the things that, or the thing I should say, singular, that was the biggest deal for me was expectations. Expectations to perform, 
to live up to and to excel to a certain standard and those expectations really came from three different areas uh, the first of which is personal I had personal expectations for myself you know while I was in college whether that be academically or athletically uh, there were standards there were expectations that I'd placed upon myself to end up graduating with a certain GPA you know to finish my career playing ball having gain certain notoriety or, or awards or achievements. You know, I'd placed expectations upon myself uh, socially even to leave a mark, you know, to, to make sure that people knew who I was on campus. But then there were also expectations that came from my parents, you know, and it wasn't necessarily expectations that they sat me down on the couch at home before I went to college and say, all right, son, while you're there, this is what we expect out of you but just expectations that I felt like my parents had of me in general while I was there, and that was to make good grades. You know, that was not to, to act out in ways in which I shouldn't, you know, not to act a fool while I was in college, not to waste time while I was there. And so I felt like there were expectations that came from my parents, and I know a lot of you probably feel like that way as well. And some of us, I think, are more pressured than others by our parents. My parents never really put pressure on me, but I knew the expectations were there and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing but then there was also expectations that I felt like came from my peers as well things that that they held me to a standard on whether that be like group projects you know not wanting to be the one person that lets your group project down so you end up being the one person that does everything for your group funny how that works out you know whether that be like not wanting to disappoint them when it came to hanging out on the weekends or something like that, as busy as your schedules are, uh, that people-pleasing side of us sometimes really wants to make sure that we make time for everybody, even though we don't necessarily have time to do those things. So making sure that I pleased every group of peers that I had influence with to make time to hang out with them. And so expectations were big for me in college, and it's one thing that I made a big deal out of. And during my college years, it was a big deal. You know, expectations is what worried me. It's what stressed me out. It's what kept me up at night but now I look back and I think you know it was kind of pointless for me to make a big deal over what other people expected out of me and even what I expected out of myself because in the grand scheme of things it really doesn't matter you know we just talked to you guys about identity last week and when it comes to expectations it doesn't necessarily matter what you think other people expect out of you as much as it matters what God has declared over you and so expectations for me were kind of a big deal but you know we understand for you guys it could be grades you know grades are a big deal for you you want to excel academically you know you want to make the dean's list uh, you want to have a certain GPA once you graduate maybe it's picking a career path you know that's that's a big deal to you trying to find out like Ashley said as soon as you burst into the college scene your freshman year you instantly want to know of what it is that you want to do for the rest of your life. And that doesn't work like that 95% of the time, just letting you know. And so grades and career path might be a big deal to you. And those things are important. Absolutely. We're not trying to say, hey, you know, you should be perfectly fine with like a 1.8 <laughs> GPA or something like that. You should be perfectly fine after going to college for seven years and still not having any idea what you want to do with the rest of your life. We're not encouraging that. Uh, by no means, those things are important. And they're worth being concerned over. You know, maybe you're like me and it's expectations. You've got all these expectations you've placed upon yourself or you feel like other people have placed upon you. And it's a big deal to you to live up and even excel past what those expectations are. Maybe it's social status or image. You, you think it is a big deal what people perceive you as. If you look around and you don't think that you live up to the same standards as other people around you, whether it's not having what they have materialistically, or whether it's not having what they have physically in appearance. It's a big deal to you to try and keep up with those things. And so for some of you, that's your struggle. That's your big deal. And like we said, some of these things, they are important. Grades are important. Uh, declaring a career, finding a degree, that's an important thing. Absolutely. They're worth our concern. But they shouldn't be declining our health. Research tells us that 18 to 33 year olds are the most stressed group of people living in this country right now. That's a pretty wide range of ages and it goes over a bunch of different stages of life for a lot of us. Trey and I, we still fall in this even though we're getting pretty old and we 
have a kid. We're not out of this age group yet. But um, from 18 to 33, lots of things typically happen in your life. I mean, you choose whether you're going to go to college or not. You you choose whether what kind of job you're going to have. If you're going to work while you're in college or not, are you going to go straight to a career and not go to college? Are you going to finish college and then try to find a career with your degree? Or are you going to choose not to use your degree? And are you going to get married? And are you going to have children? There's just a lot going on then. So these years of your life are meant to be something that are your most enjoyable years. But in ways, sorry, in ways you have more freedom and less responsibilities. And it's the peak of your physical health. So these are supposed to be years that you are finding yourself, learning about yourself, learning how you fit into society, who you're going to be. But instead, a lot of us are enduring these years instead of enjoying these years. Because for the most part, you're making way too big of a deal out of things that really don't make that big of a difference in your life. Yeah, and a lot of us are missing out on some of what should be, like we said, the most enjoyable years of our life. You know, in a lot of ways, you have less responsibility and more freedom uh, than you've ever had before. And instead of enjoying it, you're just kind of enduring. You're just kind of trudging along. And, you know, I don't think that's God's design uh, necessarily for us at any stage of life. God has given us life abundant uh, through Christ, and it's meant to be enjoyed. And so on that note, you might say, well, all right, Trey, what should we as believers be making a big deal out of? So if we're not supposed to be making a big deal necessarily out of these things that we are, making a big deal out of during our college years, then what should we make a big deal out of? What should have priority? What should have preeminence? What should be something that that we excel towards or push ourselves towards? And so that's what I want to share with you kind of as we finish up tonight. Some things that I feel like we should be making a big deal out of as believers. Number one is sharing the gospel. Uh, Acts 20 and 24 says this. Paul's writing to the believers. He says, I do not account my life of any value nor is precious to myself. If only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So Paul saw his whole life's ambition was to testify to the gospel, to go around and share the good news of Jesus Christ, that salvation has come and that we can be forgiven of our sins, that we can be set free from our past and from our bondages and brought into a right relationship with God. So as believers, I think we should be making a big deal out of sharing the gospel. In Romans 10, verses 14 through 15, I think kind of explains why we should make a big deal out of sharing the gospel because Paul writes this to the Roman believers. He says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. So Paul stresses the importance of sharing the gospel. How are people going to call on someone they have not believed? And how are they going to believe if they never hear? How are they going to hear if nobody ever goes? And so this should be something that we make a big deal out of. This should be something that should be at the top of our list each and every day, looking for opportunities to share the gospel with the people around us. So I encourage you guys, make a big deal out of sharing the gospel with your friends, with your family members, with your co-workers, with your classmates. Make a big deal out of sharing the gospel. Second, make a big deal out of having a living and active faith. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 12 and 13 says this, and this is Solomon writing this, who is considered to be probably the wisest person that ever walked across the face of the earth. And listen to what he says. He says, of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So there you have it. A free pass from Solomon, the wisest man on the earth, straight out of the Bible. Studying is really pointless. Right? That's what he says. Much study is a weariness of the flesh. So forget studying. Forget your grades. I'm just kidding. In all seriousness, those things are important, but Solomon, he tried everything. He tried to find satisfaction. He tried to find fulfillment in everything, in work, in learning, in wealth, in materials, in women, relationships. He says, I've seen and done all that stuff. Here's what I've come to conclude. The only thing that matters is serving, honoring God, keeping his commandments. In other words, living, active, genuine faith and devotion to God is the only thing that matters when the day is over with. 
So what we're trying to encourage you guys with is you can push yourself to be the best student you can be. Have the highest GPA that you can have. Graduate with honors. Go and declare a degree. Go find a career. Go be the top of your business. Go, go found your own business and be the CEO of it. Have all these expectations, these goals, and these ambitions, and live up to them and even go past them. That's all great, but what really boils down to mattering in the end is having a genuine, living, and active faith and devotion to serving God with the whole of our lives. The third thing that I think we should make a big deal out of is fervent prayer. James chapter 5, verse 16, the last half of that verse says this, The prayer of a righteous person has a great power as it is working. We as believers should be making a big deal out of prayer in our lives. And I know I struggle with this in a big way. It's not a big enough deal for me. And I think a lot of you would admit the same thing, that prayer is not a big enough deal in your life. And hopefully some of the circumstances and situations that our world has gone through here recently has ramped up the prayer life of a lot of believers. But we should be engaged in fervent prayer day in and day out because there's great need around us. There's people that need Jesus. There's people that need healing. Now, there's people that need God to do a complete miracle in their lives and whatever situation or circumstance that they're going through to completely turn that around so that they can see his love and his grace and his mercy in those things. So fervent prayer should be something that we make a big deal out of in our lives. And then lastly, but definitely not leastly, is missional community. We should make a big deal out of having missional community in our lives. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Let me read this out of Acts chapter 20, verses 36 through 38. Paul, as he's saying this, he's just met with the Ephesian believers. And Paul loved the Ephesians about as much as he loved anybody. And he spent as much time there as he did anywhere else. But he knew God was leading him to go elsewhere. And listen to what he says as he's getting ready to leave. They kneel down on the shore with him and they pray together and just listen to the tone of passion in his voice here it says and when he had said these things so he told them i'm fixing to leave and go elsewhere he knelt down and prayed with them all and there was much weeping on the part of all they embraced paul and kissed him being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken that they would not see his face again and they accompanied him to the ship so what i mean by we should make a big deal out of having missional community I'm talking about it should be a big deal in our lives to have a community of believers around us that support us, that encourage us, that pray for us, and we return the favor for them as well. As Paul is getting ready to go elsewhere, it says they knelt down on the banks of this lake as he's getting ready to board the ship, and they're crying. They're weeping because Paul's going elsewhere, and they're okay with that because they know he has to. He has to go share the gospel. He has to go plant churches in other cities. And so they support that. But it wasn't without emotion. They had built a relationship with each other. And you guys know that, I mean, you can experience some good relationships in this world, but there's nothing that goes as deep as a relationship that brothers and sisters in Christ experience with each other through the common bond of the Holy Spirit. So missional community is something that we should make a big deal out. It should be a big deal to us to have this kind of community in our lives within the body of Christ where we have brothers and sisters in our life that will cry with us, that will laugh with us, that will be there in times of need, that will be there to help us enjoy times of abundance. It's just a special thing to have. And it's something that we should put preeminence on in our life. It it should have high value for us to have community with each other like it did for Paul here. And so we know you guys have got a lot of different things that pull at your attention during your college years. And we're not trying to minimalize any of the things that you might consider to be a very big deal in your life right now. But trust us from experience, looking back on some of these things that you're stressing over right now, whether it be grades, projects, assignments, whether you be one of those people that just gets heavy, heavy test anxiety, you're going to look back on those things one day and realize it's kind of silly I got that worked up over that stuff. It is a big deal, but it's kind of not a big deal at the same time. We would much rather you see these things become a big deal in your life, sharing the gospel, having a living and active faith, fervent prayer, missional community, Make these things the top of your list. Make these things the things that you pursue 
and go after and apply into your life. Trust God with the outcome. GPA is great. Grades are great. Finding a degree path is great. Expectations are great. But just commit to follow God in complete obedience, and he'll take care of the rest one day at a time. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Uh, we hope that these things have been beneficial to you. We hope that you've learned some lessons now uh, that you won't have to learn later on in life like we did. Let me pray, and we'll wrap it up. God, we thank you again for the time that you've given us to gather together across media. And while we're prevented from gathering together in person, God, and I pray that this message has found fertile soil in the hearts of those that have come across it and listened in. And God, we pray for our students. Lord, we know that there's some things that are that are big in their life right now, God, and we're not trying to minimize those things whatsoever, but we do realize and understand from our experience that they may not be as big as what they think they are right now, God. There are bigger things. There are more important things, God, in that. This unneeded worry, this unneeded stress that they're having over these things, God, is, is not something that you desire to continue to be a part of their lives. So help them to focus their eyes and their attention and their heart upon you, God, and make us intentional about being people that go out and share the gospel uh, each and every day with the opportunities that you bring into our lives to do so, God, and build us into a living and active faith, God, that is bold and courageous and, and doesn't waver, God, and help us to be a people of fervent prayer for the world around us, for our friends, for our family members, God, for our co-workers, for our classmates, for our teammates, all the people that you have allowed us to influence, God, may we bathe them in prayer and the situations and the circumstances that they're in, and especially for those that need to find Jesus, God, and I pray that you would just strengthen the community that we have with each other, God, that it would continue to grow deeper and stronger and wider. We ask it all in Christ's holy name, amen. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in this week. We miss you guys so much. We want you to know that we love you. We're praying for you. And we are still here for you, even though you're not here with us. Whether that's prayer requests that you need, or you need to talk through something, or you just need somebody to chat to, we're here and we're available. And you can reach out to us anytime. So from me, Ashley, and Graham, we want to wish you guys a safe summer. And we'll see you again this fall. Bye. Bye.